and um, it's not easy. I wonder if you've got any tips about it, you know, in the sense of making connections with other progressive movements. Any tips about it, and almost like tips about why it's quite hard? Well, I think it's, um, it's hard because you're often dealing with people that, are red, uh, that, that have still got the, the human supremacist mindset, because although they're concerned about other issues of uh, persecution, exploitation, uh, involving humans, that not um, it, it's not clicked with them that it's it's wrong for animals to be exploited. Um, so so the, there can be that difficulty. But I think when where you have people that are, are, are already questioning uh, the general way that society operates, where you've got people that are already. Um, in campaigning on radical issues. Uh, in, in general, I think those, those people are more open-minded to our ideas, and, and so it's really easy to get across to those people than it might be to just you know any general member of the public. I think that's the first thing. Um, and, and that's that's one reason to, to be involved in. I mean, a lot of these issues, of course, that, that they have their own value. You know, that they're, they're things to, for us to support just as decent human beings anyway. You know, like campaigns for, you know, for women's rights and campaigns against racism. Those things are things that we should support as, as decent human beings anyway, you know, um, irrelevant of us, you know, uh, or, 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 or separate from us thinking that we can kind of uh, get those people to, to be vegan. Um, I think the other, the, the other reason why alliance politics is important is because so much of uh, human behaviour is dictated by by governments, you know, by what's but you know by, by, by what laws are laid down, by what you know what, what propaganda is put out by the government, and by what people are allowed to do and and, and, and not permitted to do. And so, if, if we're going to if we're going to actually make a difference there, if we're going to create a political system where animals are given um, proper protection, where there are proper laws to protect animals, and all that kind of thing, and, and where um, veganism is, is is more promoted, um, and and where a, a compassionate viewpoint towards animals is is considered to be important then I don't think we're going to do that on our own. We're going to have to be in alliance with other groups that are campaigning for a better world as well in order to create a powerful enough force to create that change. And so that's another reason to be in alliance with those groups. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hi. I just wanted to ask, um, you probably heard a uh, comparement uh, why we are not meat eaters, the structure of a body. Yeah. I still, I still don't know um, about the, our, why our eyes are in front. You know, it's like a predator sign. Do you know any uh, I, arguments for that? Well, it's, well, the thing is that um, we're omnivores. That's 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 the uh, kind of dietary classification, so to speak, which means that we can eat um, a wide variety of different foods, and we can eat, you know, we, we can eat. Um, animal products, and we can digest um, a lot of animal products. Although it's very interesting to know, in relation to milk, for instance, that most people in the world can't digest milk and, and, and would be ill if they drank milk. And so, so all, 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 all propaganda about, you know, we need milk to survive and calcium and all that is, is obviously nonsense because most people in the world don't drink milk and they still survive. And Healthily. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a bit of a side point. I mean, we're omnivores, which means, yes, we can, we, we can eat animals and, and, and we can digest um, uh, animal products, or, or, or most animal products anyway. But that doesn't mean that we should do it. I mean, we, we can kill and eat babies and, and, and human babies, we'd be right, we can eat that flesh. We could, we could eat one another, we, we'd be able to digest that, we'd be able to survive. That doesn't mean it's right. And I think because we're become, because we're omnivores and, and we can survive on a, on a wide range of different foods, I think therefore we're morally obliged 
to eat as compassionately as possible. Just because we can eat something doesn't mean we should or that we have to. And, and, and really, the fact I, I think the fact that we're, we're omnivores actually obliges us more to be vegan because it means that we can survive perfectly well on animal products, and so therefore that's what we should do. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to follow on from that question. Um, one of the most common uh, re responses I get to, you know, what, or people say, well, it's natural to be these. You know, we're, we're, we've always done it. We did it when we were hunter-gatherers in the forests 100,000 years ago. So we're biologically and evolutionarily adapted to do it, you know. Um, so why don't we do it now? I, as a vegan, understand that the context in today's world is completely different. That killing an antelope with a spear in a forest 50,000 years ago is not the same thing as what happens today. I, I get that, but... It's about survival. People just don't, they think, you know, um, well, we're on force, we, we, were, we were hunter-gatherers then, so we should be now. And there's an entire actual um, group of people, you know, the paleo diet people, who think that it's actually the most healthy way to do it. And I've done a good bit of research on that. And, you know, I'm absolutely convinced that it isn't. But uh, how do you convince, how do you, what, what do you say to people who come up with that reason for being a vegan, not being the natural diet? I, I, I think I know what you're going to say, probably that it's the ethical thing. You'll say, well, we have a moral obligation because we're aware of what happens to change the importance of that. Yeah, but well, most people don't, a lot of people don't care about that reason, you know? I mean, I, I mean the, the, the thing is that our natural diet is an omnivorous diet. Yeah. In other words, that we can eat a wide, wide range of different things. And so, you know, people in one part of the world will eat different food than people not. I mean, that's a bit different now with stuff being shipped all over the world. But like at one time, somebody in one part of the world would eat a completely different diet to somebody in another part of the world and they both survive. We've got this wide, wide range of, 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 of different food. And we can survive perfectly well and perfectly healthy on healthy on a vegan diet. That's the first thing. So if, 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 we, if we have a choice of eating a diet that doesn't involve suffering or involves a minimum of, of suffering and slaughter, or eating a, another diet where there's a great deal of suffering and slaughter involved, then surely it's right that the, the, the diet that we should be eating is, is the one that involves the, the minimum amount of slaughter and suffering. Surely that's 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 as clear as day for anyone okay. to see. Okay. Let's say someone points then to nature, to natural predators like a lion or a cheetah or a wolf, and say, well, they cause suffering, they kill, so you know, it's just part of nature. But they don't, they don't have the choice, you see, it, it, because we, if, if, if Yeah, if, we, I know what you're saying, yeah. we do, yeah. If, if a creature can't choose, you can't blame that creature for not choosing. Yeah. But if somebody can choose, if, if, if you can choose between two paths, one that causes a massive amount of suffering and, and killing, and another one that doesn't, yeah. then because we're, we're able to choose the good path, then we're morally obliged to choose the good path, and we should choose. These animals, like lions and tigers and all those creatures, they they don't have that power of choice. And so if they don't have the power of choice, they can't be blamed. There's no moral. Um, they can't be criticised from a moral point of view for killing the other animals because they, they weren't able to choose to do anything different. And the other thing about stuff that's gone on for a long, long time, you know, people say, well, we, you know, we've always eaten animals, we've always slaughtered animals and eaten them, and so we still should. Well. Stuff like slavery has gone on for slavery has gone on for thousands and thousands of years. You know, I mean, it still go, it still does go on some parts of the world, but it, slavery is like ancient history has gone on since ancient history. So because that's you know something that's gone on for so long, does that mean it's right? Because it's something people have always done. Well, of course, it doesn't mean it's right because it's always happened, and it's the same with it's, it's, it's the same with slaughtering animals for food. And, exploiting animals for food, just because that's gone on for millennia doesn't mean that it's right and doesn't mean that we should stop that, that we shouldn't stop doing it. Um, I don't know where to begin 
my question, but it leads on from what this discussion has been so far. Uh, I'm a raw food vegan, and um, I, I see. I don't. I'm also like I follow natural hygiene, and, and mm. from the natural hygiene, this is actually where we get at the physiological argument, mm. because they were one of the first people who actually kind of systematically said, "Well, what's the human body made for?" Mm. But their criterion was in its natural state, with what you, without cooking. What's the human? So because every animal lives in a state of nature with nature, and they take what nature gives them. And so every animal is made for a certain food. Um, like a tiger is actually made for eating an antelope, but an antelope is made for eating grass, etc., etc. And it's not really unethical for a tiger to eat an antelope because that's what it's made for. But the natural hygienist would say, you look at the human body physiologically, and what you could go out in nature and get, it would be fresh ripe fruits, vegetables, and small amounts of nuts and seeds, and you wouldn't really be an omnivore. Mm. And then they, they would say, look at the great apes, etc. they're pretty much eat like that, and they eat a few grubs and things like that. So, come from where I'm coming from, I, I don't accept that we're omnivores and, and we have the choice. I see where you're coming from with yeah. the argument, it makes sense within itself. Mm. But I actually think that you can, be, you can be ethically a vegan for those same reasons, but for an even greater reason, thinking that this is, look, nature made us to eat a certain kind of food of what nature gives us that we're made for. Look, look at our hands, our eyes, actually, I'd say. We have stereoscopic vision for picking berries, I would say. Yeah. But, you know, the opposing thumb, it's great for gathering fruit and all these kind of things. It, it really sucks for killing animals, though. Mm. So I wouldn't actually, I, I think we can only be omnivo and omnivorous when the cooking comes in. And when you cook, you cook anything, you can eat anything. And humans do. We're the only animals that eat everything. Mm. Yeah. Vegetarian, non-vegetarian, plant, animal, you name it. Slime, fungus, we eat the whole lot. Because mm. you just heat it and it all breaks down a bit and then it's all edible. Mm. But I actually wrote an article in the Irish Vegetarian and I took exception with someone who said it's, it's, it's ethical to support the idea of, um, of test tube meat. You can't object to that in ethical terms. And if, if your only ethic is compassion, well, maybe, you, yeah, we should support these 250,000 euro burgers that people are making um, because, well, it's compassionate. But it's not really because it, you can see it's such a huge step away from nature and it's going to make you sick. Whereas if you eat the food that nature really gave us, it's both ethical and healthy. And that's why I get a little bit dismayed sometimes when I see the vegan cake sales and all this, like it's yeah. all cooked food and loads yeah. of legumes and it's just, it's not great food and we're, we're also not going to thrive in the way I think we should. Mm. Whereas if, 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 if we get a little bit, you know, I'm not saying 100%, but leave a bit of the cooking aside here and just eat the really natural food and you're going to be ultra compassionate as well. Mm. Because you're doing, because to me I think the argument is, well, if we were actually carnivorous animals, it would not be uncompassionate if that's what your body was made for to go kill and eat an animal. Like I don't think a tiger is being uncompassionate. It just it does. That. And actually, when tigers are full, they'll they'll go to the water hole beside the antelope. And the antelope won't be afraid because you know, somehow the antelope can figure that the tiger will be afraid. So I'm just making this point that we can we can um, the, and there does seem there's a divide there as well. So I just want I'd like to see it to get, come together because I think it can be harmonious where we can be more healthy and compassionate. So anyway, just want to get your take. I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think the health aspect is, is very important because if we became, if it wasn't possible to live healthy on a vegan diet, in other words, if through being vegans we all became horrendously ill, then there'd be a strong argument to say, well, look, um, it is justifiable therefore to eat animal products because we we're able to eat a vegan diet, but we become ill on that diet, and so therefore that would then justify eating animal products, providing those animals were treated as humanely as possible. But, but the, the actual fact is that you know, the vegan diet is is a healthy diet, but it's at least as healthy, it's not more so than uh, a meat eating diet or a vegetarian diet. So, so therefore, um, <coughs> we we aren't justified that reason consuming animal products because you don't need them for health. Now, um, you know, I, I, I don't have a problem with 
um, the idea of the raw food diet, and you, know, you may well be right about that. But it, it's a question of, of the general public. Like if, if you're doing a street store, then and somebody comes up and says, "Oh, you know, we we make some meat animals," and then say, "I was trying to say, no, you know, um, we're not. We should be living on a raw food vegan diet." Then it's you then got this clash of opinions that maybe can't be resolved because they believe one thing, maybe I believe another, right? Mm -hmm. And you're and so you got this argument. Whereas in fact, when when you say uh, no, we can we can eat all sorts of different things, you're not actually disagreeing with that person because they know that anyway <coughs> because they eat you know they eat their meat, but they're also eating lots of other stuff as well. You see, so no one can deny that, that human beings can eat a wide range of different foods, and so it's therefore it's there it therefore becomes easier to get through to somebody on that level. On, 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 on the level of saying that you know, humans are omnivorous because we eat all sorts of different things. Um, and of course, most people cook their food. So, to say to an ordinary person on the street, oh, well, look, you, you, you can live on a raw food diet, that's going to be so alien to them that it, it, it's going to be maybe harder to um, teach them about veganism. I think if you're going to get people to become raw food vegans, you've got to get them just to become all food vegans first and then go down that road, that road if you see what I mean. Rather than an ordinary member of the public getting them to jump from being meat eaters to eating just raw vegetable food. So that's that's that, that's the, the, the reason I'd use that omnivore argument because it's it's easier to persuade ordinary people with, with using that argument. You see what I mean? I just have a question. Um, in relation to our digestive tract, that our digest digestive tract is more akin to those animals who eat grass. In other words, it's a very long digestive tract. Whether the carnivorous animals, tiger, lion, they have a very short digestive tract. Mm -hmm. When we start eating meat, all that meat will have a long way to travel mm -hmm. in our digestive system those creating a lot of diseases, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, so many diseases yeah. that are now related to eat eating, to be eating. So with that in mind, I wonder, are we really truly omnivorous? Well, I think we're, we are omnivorous. Human beings are, are omnivorous like as a matter of fact, that's the way human beings actually do live, isn't it? On, on an omnivorous diet, because people eat, eat meat, or most people do, but they eat all sorts of vegetable products as well. So, 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 so we do live as omnivores, and most people um, that, that aren't vegans but live as omnivores. But perhaps not to the best of our advantage, because our no. digestive tract yeah. was not designed yeah. for that. Yeah. But I think that, I mean, obviously that's something that can be used in discussions with people and, that, and there are, um, you know, vegan leaflets that go into that aspect of things about what's the, the healthiest diet for us and, and, and that's a good thing to, to give to people along with, along with every, everyone. But what I'm thinking of is a simple argument to use, um, to, to use for people that come up to me because you know someone will come to the store and say oh you need meat to survive and I say well I've been a vegan for over 40 years and I'm still here and I'm fine you know so you know and so it's so loads of other people have, have, have done the same we don't we don't actually need we do not need animal products to survive and we do not need animal products to be healthy <coughs> so therefore it cannot be right to put animals through all that suffering and slaughter when it's completely unnecessary for our health and survival. That's a very simple argument. And I think the problem is we start making it more complicated than that. It's more difficult to get through to 